the Colts just locked up one of the most disruptive defenders in the entire NFL for the next few years. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, new intro, Hootis. What is up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we wanted to bring you a little mini-sode here because we're going to continue our Mock Draft Monday later today like we normally have been doing for you. And it's so close to the draft that we want to follow through with that. But the Colts made some big, big news today. Uh, they added another extension to their tool belt uh, this offseason, signing another player who had a year left already, locking up DeForest Buckner with a two-year extension, $46 million, uh, keeping him paid around $23 million a year. Uh, this is a really good move for both sides, Zach. For the Colts, they obviously are making it so that they do not have this need to worry about next year. And for Buckner, he still cashes in at a pretty high rate because if you look at this next year when he's like 31 years old, let's say his season doesn't go as planned because, you know, he's in his prime still, but like it's not uncommon for guys to begin to decline. He got paid really well compared to what might have been next year. Yeah, yeah. And look, at the end of the day, DeForest Buckner is the Colt on this yes. team. You know, uh, I believe Chris Bowder said it multiple times where it's like everything that we want in a Colts player is DeForest Buckner from his leadership to his play on the field to uh, I, b- I believe Chris Ballard said he's like a pillar of their locker room mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that to to Joel uh, Erickson. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's just a, a very you know, you have to make this move. You have to have DeForest Buckner back. If you if you want to go anywhere with this team over the next couple of years, it has to be with DeForest Buckner up up the middle of the, of the defense. So I love this resigning. I, I like that they got it in before uh, maybe at a couple of other potential defensive tackles get extended. I'm sure there's a couple other guys that are coming up for contracts soon. Uh, so you want to get it in before the market continues to climb like we've seen it climb the last couple of years. Uh, and yeah, it's great. Again, DeForest Buckner, he's a pillar of this Colts team, a fantastic player on and off the field and a guy that you want all your young players to learn from and be around. So getting him for at least another two years and you don't have to worry about him next free agency, uh, major win, major win, get DeForest Buckner back here and, and make it so he retires a Colt. That'd be awesome to see. We'd love to see him retire a Colt one day. Absolutely. I, I cannot have imagined the Colts moving on from him. Um, but you know that he's, a really prolific player year in and year out. He's great. You know, since it is time with the Colts four years, he's missed one game, but the dude's been banged up a lot the last couple of years. He plays through it. There's been sometimes even two years ago, he had a different injury, like every couple of weeks, like the, the guy just came out and, and uh, performed at a high level and, you know, tackles for loss, QB hits sacks. Like I think he averages, uh, he averages 10 and a half tackles for loss and eight sacks per season with the Colts. So the guy just comes in and performs. He is now in the top five highest paid defensive tackles in the league for a per year basis. Uh, So very well deserved. I'm the type of person where I, I don't want to sound like a homer, but I do think he's criminally underrated across the league. When you see all these lists come out of like the best of their position, defensive tackles, there was one that came out that had a top 10 and he wasn't even on it recently, which I mean, there's a lot of rich talent in this league right now. But this is a guy, three Pro Bowls, two All Pros. I think he should be in the All Pro argument every year. Now, again, it's a deep group, but like the guy is a perennial Pro Bowler on the field. So it's really good for the Colts to acknowledge his value. And like you mentioned, this is a guy who all your young players, they have to emulate him. He is one of the best lead by example people in that entire locker room. And to me, this is a no brainer. Yeah, now the big thing for the Colts going forward is just keeping him fresh and keeping him healthy mm-hmm. and keeping, you know, they play him at such a high rate. Even this Gus Bradley system where they rotate defensive tackle quite a bit because of injuries, because of suspensions the last couple of years, he's been playing at a very high rate of play, like a high high rate of snaps. Uh, so hopefully, you know, the, the addition of Raekwon Davis this, this offseason, the uh, other guys on the roster like Dio Dangbo and guys like uh, Adetomi Adebore, you know, those guys can limit his snaps a little bit. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, when it comes down to the, those fourth quarters and you need a play, you need a sack, you need a pressure, 
DeForest Buckner has been that guy since he's come, since he's arrived in Indy. He's been that guy where it's like, you need a big play. You need a big moment. It's going to be DeForest Buckner. It might not be a sack every time, but it'll be the pressure. You know, you're going to get that patented swim move where he's going to get past whoever is in front of him and, and produce some pressure on the quarterback. So uh, DeForest Buckner is again, like the pillar of this defense pillar, this locker room and the pillar of this team. Uh, and if they can just, you know, get a little bit better at edge on the outside, they can have a prolific pass rush because he's that good on the interior. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that, you know, Dio Dangbos had some flashes, Quiddy Pace had some flashes, and Sam Sanabukam has had some flashes as well. But, you know, DeForest Buckner is the, the workhorse of this defensive line. Tons of double teams, still has a high win rate. And if one of those guys can just emerge as like a, a plus pass rush, like these guys are all decent pass rushers, but mm-hmm. like if they can emerge as like a legit pass rusher alongside him, you already have Buckner. You already have that stud. Having one more would be great. But uh, just to talk about Buckner again, man, just just fantastic player, fantastic player, run defense, pass defense. And, li- and like you said, a guy who probably should be on every top 10 list, despite it being like a historically great era for defensive tackle play. Uh, we have so many great defensive tackles, and he's one of the big names in there. Uh, but yeah, he should be a top 10 guy for a lot of people, a, a pro bowler slash all pro every single year. And as long as he stays healthy next year, we're going to see another great season from him because that's just what we always see from him. He's the standard of, of this defense and the standard of this team. The standard is be like Buckner. And mm-hmm. the, the Colts have really established that by giving him this extension early. Yeah. And this can be his 30 year old season, but guys still playing a high level, just had a career high, uh, single high end tackles this year as well. So Guys still playing at a high level. So coming up, we're going to talk about what this means for the rest of the Colts defense, the rest of the Colts interior defensive line group. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or it is your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. So with all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it is easy to make your car the MVP and bring home some huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, Zach. So the Colts not uh, not to be truffled with this offseason when it comes to what they want their front seven to look like. Uh, they re-signed Grover to a three-year deal. He was a free agent. Um, tied him and Buckner together through 2026 now with this new two-year extension. Zaire Franklin gets a new tier or a new extension as well. So they really have identified the core of their defense. And I mean, this Colts run defense now should be a plus unit again for the foreseeable future, as long as no one gets suspended or hurt or anything. (laughs) Uh, But there's, there's several ramifications we're going to talk about here. What's some of the biggest that stand out to you? Yeah. I think it's like you said, where, you know, you kind of are setting yourself up to have to go young in the secondary for the foreseeable future because mm-hmm. you're devoting all these resources to the front seven. I mean, Samson Ebukam has got another two years on his contract uh, at nearly $10 million per year. DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart, you are just loading up that interior defensive line uh, with big contracts. And Raekwon Davis is also on a two-year deal that's that's pretty solid as well. And then you have Zaire Franklin at a pretty solid contract. You got EJ Speed with one more year left on his contract. So all of your money that you're spending really on defense is coming in that front seven. So you're basically saying to to the back seven or to the back four, back five, however you want to break it down there with uh, your personnel. But you're saying to those those back end guys like, you you know, you're going to be our cheaper contracts, you know, our cheaper contracts are younger players. You know, you're going to have these veterans, these experienced veterans in front of you go out there and you got to, you know, hold down the fourth there on the back end because, these guys in front of you are going to do the best they can to obviously make your job easier, but it's going to be a lot of younger guys. It's Kenny Moore and the kids again, you know, in that, in that back, uh, that secondary again. And and I don't expect there to be like another big move for a veteran in the secondary because they're, they're committing all these resources to that trench play. That trench play mm-hmm. is everything right now. Uh, and then the, the coverage is going to be a lot of young guys just kind of doing what they can and hopefully growing from where they were last year. Uh, but yeah, there it's, it's a, 
very big commitment to the interior of the defensive line, the interior of the defense in general with, if you throw Zaire Franklin in there as well. And it's not like these are bad players. I mean, they're, they're mm -hmm. committing to DeForest Buckner, our top 10 defensive tackle in football to Grover Stewart. One of the best run run stuffing one text in football, Zaire Franklin, a really, really good run defending linebacker who's shown some flashes and pass coverage as well. Uh, so they're, they're committing to their good players that they have found through the drafts or acquired through, through trades and, and they're, you know, relying on those young kids on the back end to take that next step. Uh, that's really what this says to me is like, look, we're going to give you kids back there as much as we can up front with guys like Buckner and Grover and Zaire and all them. It's on you guys to perform now, you know, while you're even though you're still like, what, 23, 24 years old, it's still on you mm -hmm. guys to perform with all the help we've given you in the front seven. Yeah, absolutely. So what it says to me. Um, you know, just going off of that is we've seen a lot of things where people forecast a year from now and, you know, what is, what do the Colts do if Buckner doesn't come back? You know, what if things get rocky and he wants out, yada, yada, whatever, it doesn't matter now because he's obviously signed this extension to me. It, it takes the pressure off of um, Adetome and Eric Johnson needing to take a big next step in the event that they need to fill a spot there. Although, I do think it's necessary for their development. And if they're going to stick around, they do need to show development, but now it's not so critical for the Colts that they do that. Uh, and then the biggest thing for me is we always knew in the back of our mind, it was possible. The Colts might love some of these defensive tackles early and want to take one early. Now I'm pretty sure the Byron Murphy or anyone else going in the first round to the Colts. I think that talk can die because you know, just a little kind of segue into what our mock draft is going to be later. It's it's going to be framed on picks that we don't necessarily love, but could have happened. And that was going to be mine. What was a defensive tackle in the first round. So now it means the Colts don't really have to look forward and say, what do we do if we don't have Buckner? Because that that problem no longer exists. Yeah, I mean, it, it narrows your focus in the draft, which, mm -hmm. you know, it can be a good thing. It can be a good thing. You don't have to maybe they knew all along so they didn't spend as much time on defensive tackles in this class i think i was looking at um our guy brent uh fan of nuance on twitter he mm -hmm. did a indie like visit tracker and yeah. stuff and i think there was only like one or two defensive tackles they spent yeah. time with it's this offseason so they might have known they might have known the whole time like look buckner's not going anywhere we got davis in here we got grover we got taven bryan back we got atatomi we've got you know, 400 defensive tackles on the roster. Yeah. We're not really going to address that in the draft here. And, but I think the official announcement of this extension just completely killed that talk. Like they're not going to take one high in this class. They might take one on day three or, you know, bring in some undrafted free agents, but for the most part, they're not going to take a defensive tackle early in this class. And that can narrow their focus to more cornerbacks safeties who they brought in like 20 something safeties uh for visits this offseason so it could be a safety corner yeah. linebacker could be a sneaky need with ej speed being a free agent or you can focus more on offense this can free up some flexibility to take an offensive player early and then take you know defense the rest of the way so you know getting this stuff done before the draft it helps you go into the draft with a clear mindset you know you don't have to be thinking Okay, so what if this guy leaves? Like, like if we're looking at the Michael Pittman Jr. and the DeForest Buckner extensions, those guys were set to be free agents next season mm -hmm. if they didn't get those extensions done. And that would make wide receiver and defensive tackle much more dire. Now you're yeah. going into the draft thinking, okay, defensive tackle, we don't really have to address it all in the top 100. Wide receiver, we could still add another one, but it's not this extremely dire thing where we have to be worried about Pittman leaving and then having nobody besides Josh Downs and Alec Pierce. So you know, getting this stuff done before the draft, it clears your mind going into the process and it opens more possibilities for other positions rather than making it such a narrow focus thing. So I love getting this done before the draft. You know, obviously getting extensions in early keeps the price tag low, but also for this where it doesn't pigeonhole you into certain positions in the draft, um, it's it's always a big plus. Yeah. And then, of course, the Colts started off offseason workouts today. Uh, we media will be out there tomorrow talking to those guys. We should be able to talk to DeForest Buckner and bring you more on uh, his side of how things have shaken out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, guys, don't worry. We'll be back here today for our actual episode. We just really wanted to get like a half episode out here on DeForest Buckner, a uh, fantastic player, and he deserves more than just like a one minute thing. So mm -hmm. we definitely wanted to give you that. But yeah, coming up later today, guys, we're going to be back here for Mock Draft Monday. And as Jake said, we're going to be picking players that 
could be a realistic options for the Colts, but we would not really be fans of uh, where the Colts would have to take those players there. But first, it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks. win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And before we pop out of here, guys, and we go over to our actual planned episode for the day, the Indie Draft Guide's orders are still open for $9.99. You guys can get access to an essential piece of reading for Colts fans, both before and after the draft, featuring 225 in-depth scouting reports, features, and much more. Click the link in our show notes to order today. Again, we can talk all these draft prospects. You could look at Byron Murphy and wonder what could have been by looking at the Indie Draft Guide there. And if you guys don't already, make sure you're following at Locked on Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks too. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast. We love you guys' rings, reviews, and we'll see you guys back here on the actual show today coming up soon.